so it started as kind of an ice cream stand. Um, did yes. I, I mean, and so the kind of the thing that he he started just selling kind of generic ice cream, I guess, but he wanted to improve on the quality and make that better. So he made it homemade. And so what is I've I've heard the term you know homemade. It's it's kind of tossed around like a marketing term now. I feel like, and it's just you know whatever. But did that? What does that actually mean? Did it mean like he was making the ice cream in his store there? Yes. The funny thing was, when he did get the recipe from William Halbauer, he purchased French freezers. And these French freezers would be, in some ways, the latest contraption to actually make ice cream. Previous to that time, you'd have to crank an ice cream freezer. But in this instance, what he began to do was to look at it and begin not only to see the ice cream with various flavors, but also the texture of the ice cream. Now, many times we will get ice cream that has shards of ice in it or it's a little bit grainy. And that's fine, but that's a lower quantity of cream. And in this instance, what Howard Johnson did was to take the idea that premium ice cream would have a standard of about 11 to 14% fat count. But what he decided to do is that if the ice cream that was being served was as good as Halbauer's, he raised it to 21% fat count. So not only was it the most rich and creamy ice cream, devoid of any ice shards, but it was also the best that was available on the market. And he sold them for a nickel a cone. But he didn't just do ice cream. He even had ice cream scoops that were designed specially for him. And they were conical, and they had a cut top so that the piece itself would actually, of ice cream, would not only be conically shaped, but there would be a neck. And it was double the size of anyone else's ice cream cone. Ah. So at a Nicola cone, at the height of the summer, 28 different flavors, he was selling thousands of ice cream cones on a daily basis. And throughout the 1920s and 1930s, it wasn't just at his corner store in Wollaston, um, a part of Quincy, Massachusetts, but he was also renting stands at Nantasket Beach, at Wollaston Beach, and we saw even one at Revere Beach. So at a Nicola Cone, he was in some ways amassing a fortune. <laughs> and it was also something that word of mouth, people began to realize that Howard Johnson's ice cream was not just delicious, but there was really a palate flavor for everyone. And I think it was something that just took off with alacrity. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. He, so he just, he made great ice cream. He made a bunch of flavors. It was a good value. He got a lot of it and for a good price. And then, so he started with these corner stores. Where did the name, where did he decide, was it called Howard Johnson's at that time? Or when did he decide to just name his restaurant his his own full name? It was in 1925 when he started. And the funny thing was, it was on every single... Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy. And these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats. And all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video. And this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay. I believe you if you said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats. And all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to curiosity with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Throw on that very